I recreated Sabrina Carpenter's taste. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step that process and sharing with you some music production tips and techniques to help elevate your music production. So let me show you the finished result and then I'll walk you through each step. Here's everything together. All right, so there's lots to unpack here. I'm gonna start with the drums, but before we do that, just wanna welcome you to the video and to the channel. My name is Ivan Corliza. I've been producing music professionally for the past 23 years now, and I am really excited to come alongside artists, musicians, music producers, and help them build confidence with the music that they're passionate about making. I do this through beatacademy.com, where I provide personalized mentorship and resources to help you achieve your goals. So visit beatacademy.com for more resources. Now the song features a lot of live recorded instruments, live drum set recording, guitars, and all uh, different types of instrumentation. So I'm gonna be going with a hybrid approach where I'll be recording some live instrumentation, but I'm also going to use supplements of like virtual instruments, such as acoustic drum sets and things like that. The goal isn't necessarily to dial in showcase the exact sound and preset used on the song. The goal is to create the general vibe and feeling that we get from the source material, the original, and then understand the principles and the foundations of how we can capture that kind of energy and vibe so that we can implement it in songs that we wanna produce that have that similar or are being influenced by that as well. So I'm more concerned with not telling you what to learn. I wanna encourage you on how to learn so that you can implement some of these tips in your own projects and make them your own. So I'm not really interested in saying, here's the exact sound, here's the exact preset. I wanna share with you the why behind I'm doing these decisions so it actually frees you up to find and develop your own preference and taste within this video. So let's dive in and take a look at the drums here. So for the drums, I'm gonna start by the source material using Excellent Audio's Addictive Drums 2. It's kind of been my go-to for acoustic drums lately, and I'm using the Fairfax Volume 2 kit. And as I'm listening to the original, I'm hearing it and I'm like, man, let me just locate a drum kit that actually just sounds as close as possible. And that's always a good place to start. So cycling through some of the presets I have and then landing on this one as I'd be like, yeah, this has a good sonic representation of what I'm looking for. And then inside the actual uh, plugin itself, I'm making sure that I'm going to route each individual sound through its own separate output so that I can manipulate it later with some of my third-party plugins or native plugins within Ableton Live. So I'm gonna make sure I click the arrow on the bottom and choose separate out pre-fader so that the fader or the volume difference here doesn't have an effect on the output signal. I'll do that with the kick, snare, hi-hat, and then also have the overheads, the room, and the separate bus mix to each individual audio track. So in order to do that, I'll create an audio track, and then in the audio track, the input from external input to drum MIDI, which is just the MIDI track that has my excellent audio drum kit plugin on there. Once I'm done with that, I wanna make sure I'm choosing the kick drum as the input, the source, and then set the input monitoring from off to in. That allows me to hear and monitor the signal going through this audio track, which in this case is gonna be the kick drum. Now, I can go ahead and add whatever plugins I want. So I've got the kick drum here, and I'm using this Poltec EQ from Universal Audio just to give a little bit of bottom end boost and some top shine here. And then I have an EQ here that is, I mean, seems contradictory, right? I, I'm boosting the bottom end, but cutting it, this is gonna make sense in context later on. But this is just really to give a little bit of balance to uh, the rest of the drum mix. Now, one thing I'm big on is kinda, I wanna work smarter, not harder. Rather than really tweaking and spending so much time and getting that kick and massaging it and molding that clay to getting as close as possible, I'd rather get somewhat maybe 60% there and then layer it with another sound 
so that it actually helps elevate and take it to the finish line. So this is the drum kick or the kick drum from the Exelon Audio kick. And then what I did was I created a MIDI track right next to it so that I can load in my drum sample, another kick drum sample to be layered right on top of that. So that gives a lot more of that, put, that punch and that knock, that punch in the upper mid that can really help it stand out in the mix. If I'm listening to the drum piece, like, man, I, I'm not hearing the kick drum, it's not poking out enough. And so I would raise the volume or add some things on there. It's like, well, you know what? Let's just add another kick that has a lot of those attributes that I'm looking for and layering it. And there you go, got nothing on it because it does the job. And so the way I do this is um, the excellent audio track is where all the MIDI programming is living in. So this is the actual drum groove right here. So let's go ahead and just listen to the drums. Now being that I am triggering an acoustic drum kit, it's important that you actually do take the time to adjust velocities and make sure that everything isn't just stiff and bland because you get a really robotic uh, performance. So. Um, I would go to individual notes, hold the control key, adjust the velocity on some of them so that some hits are a lot more accented than others. Same thing here with the hi-hat as well. So once I have the performance there, I simply just copy the MIDI region or the MIDI performance into my kick drum track, delete everything except the kick drum pattern. The I'll same the thing same here, thing for, here the for the snare drum. drum. Because I'm because also, also going to do the same thing. I'm going to layer a snare, snare drum with, with another, another snare, snare uh, sample. sample. So let's, so just, let's take just take a listen, a listen to, to the kicks, kicks and, and snares. snares. Let me just, just bypass, bypass the effects. So let me take those two samples off, the kick, kick and snare, snare sample. sample. Let's put, put the overheads, the room mic, and the hi-hat in. Now, this is just the acoustic kit itself. Sounds great. Add samples in there now. They just add a nice little touch, and it kind of emphasizes a bit more depth that I'm looking for from the actual drum kit. So on the overheads, giving it some crunch with the overdrive. I've got some EQ here. Actually, uh, I'm just going to remove some low end. And then I love this erosion plugin from Ableton Live because on the overheads like this, it just gives this nice sizzle that sits on top, um, adds a really good crispiness to the overhead. So I'll take this off. Almost like if it was being compressed into an MP3 kind of thing. That's that's the way I kind of think about it in my mind. Uh, the room mic, same thing, got some overdrive. Her mics and distortion really do help give life to these drums. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this EQ. And there you go. So we've got the drum sitting in a good place. Now on the actual drum bus itself, as I group all these things together, I'm using the UAD Audio um, DBX160. Love this compressor, and this really gives a just overall punch to acoustic drums. I mean, you hear like, it almost becomes elastic, right? Everything's just really punching. And then when the compressor's off, boop, that, things are just independently sticking out. And now we've got our drum bus here. This is gonna add a, a bit more drive and crunch, but I'm actually sharpening the transients here. So this is adding an extra element of, of just having the drums articulate a lot more punchiness to it. Uh, Cause I'm listening to the reference. I'm like, man, those drums are just smacking, right? Uh, so I'm going to put the transients to the left so that it's focusing on making it a lot more, uh, well, just a lot more accented on the individual hits. Then 
Then I'm using the Mac EQ4, giving it some brightness, just shaping it a little bit, the tone of this, uh, some bottom end here. That's what's really kind of allowing me to shape the tone of the drums. And then this virtual tape to kind of smooth off some of the round edges, give it a little bit more warmth after brightening everything up. A big characteristic for the acoustic drums is the effect. So I'm gonna enable the sends here and I'm sending the whole drum bus mix over to return track B. And on return track B, I have a room reverb. It's a little different though. I'm using Safari Pedal's Dirty Dog. Um, it's adding some distortion and reverb together. But to give that kind of throwback 80s sound, because that's what came to my mind, I was like, it had that, that almost gated reverb type of thing here. So this does have a gate. Um, and I was able to just kind of pinch up the pre-delay where it gives a little bit of that delay and you can really, and it just gives that throwback feel. So you can hear it now. Yeah, so in the mix, that really helps just give more of that gated reverb, kind of 80s throwback feel to it and adds really good dimension to the drums. And then we're using just a little bit of the Valhalla uh, room reverb, just a pinch of that as well. So we've got two little reverbs. But what's really giving that character is that gated pre-delayed reverb um, onto the drums. Now from the drums, I'm gonna move over to the bass. And for this, I'm actually using IK Multimedia's Moto Bass. Uh, was thinking about recording an actual bass in there, but I wanna go with that hybrid approach. So I'm going with the, I'm going with the 70s P bass here and just muting the strings a little bit. If I go to the model, here you go. And that was it, loaded it up, chose the 70s P bass, just cranked up a little bit of the muting here. Um, I do love the sound of just a muted bass. So not too much, so I left it right there. And then I'm going to uh, give a little bit of that bottom end. I want I want the low end of the bass to kind of support the kick drum to just fill that bottom end a lot. Um, this is gonna be very sub heavy. This is not like an EDM track, but I do want the bass to kind of, with the groove that it has, fill in the bottom. So we've got the Poltec once again, and then I've got this, uh, this EQ here just in context with the rest of the mix. Um, just wanted to give, take away a little bit of the low mid and boost overall the bottom here. And then the saturator. Saturator, if it looks different to you, it's because I'm currently uh, working in Ableton Live 12 beta here. And you can kind of focus in on where you want the amount, like the high amount of the saturator and, and just some some harmonic distortion to, to be added. Yeah, so it gives some nice character. Let's check that out with the drums. All right, so moving to the guitars, because they are the heart and main driving force of this song. Um, and there's a unique tone to them as well. It's not just a guitar with some crunch or distortion on it. Uh, what I was getting or hearing throughout the record was, I, it made it sound like a little bit underwater and so immediately what comes to my mind is chorus uh, and some flange and things like that. So uh, I used my cheap little telly, Fender telly here to record the guitar. And so that I tracked myself in the session. So let's see how that was, uh, that went down. So we have guitar track one, two. So it's hard pan left, hard pan right, same parts. And then I'm duplicating the first one on the bottom and purposely tweaking that to be a whole octave higher. So let's listen to guitar track one, which would be on the left. So I'm using IK Multimedia's Amplitude. Um, several amp simulators. There's so many of them out there. Um, I just went with this one. I was like, well, let me click this, 
and find a couple of cabinets that I, you know, see if I can make it work. So I started with finding the cabinet first. I went with this uh, American tube clean and then adding a bit of overdrive, some pedal compression, and that was it as far as getting the tone in the, out in the upfront. And then right after the cabinet, before the speaker, because that actually plays a big role, is I'm putting a lot of chorus. I'm using the analog chorus here to give that type of tone and, and the texture to the, to the guitar. I'm using this um, EQ8 to just shape the tone a little bit more and then simply highlight and drag over to the other guitar part as well. That puts it at a hard right. And as I mentioned, track number three is the main riff from the left channel, uh, just a whole octave higher. I'm doing that by double clicking and turning the pitch up to 12 semitones and setting it to complex. No amp simulating here, just running it through some EQ and overdrive. And this is really to create texture. Why did I do that? Well, I wanted a little bit of this harmonic texture, having the whole octave higher on there. Um, it just adds a little bit of more depth to it. Okay. Now grouping the two, the three guitar parts together, I'm now drenching them in chorus again. Um, here's without it. And some EQ. Again, the EQ is not necessarily, is this the one I need to do to make it sound good? This is in context of the rest of the mix. Uh, I wanted a little bit more mids to come out in the mix. I wanted less of the low end and low mids because I'm trying to balance all these instruments together. So that's what's going on with the EQ. Then I'm using another Safari pedal plugin here, the tape, to add a bit more grit and to give a little bit of that flutter and that wow uh, to the guitars. And then, then we've got these effects here. So we've got several effects in play here that give it the space and dimension, right? So if I disable all the sends, the tone is there. So think of it like this. The plugins I'm putting directly on the actual track is creating the character. It's, it's, the, it's the clothes I'm putting on the track. The effects send is the environment that that person is standing in, right? It's the environment that the clothes are in. So um, now I wanna dress this up to give it some space and dimension. So we're gonna have, uh, I've got on return track A, some eighth note delay. And then we have that gated reverb too. I'm sending a little bit of that to the guitar. On a return track C, I have a quarter note delay. That just helps the guitar just kind of linger a little bit more. And then return track D, we have a flanger um, from Waves. It's just the meta flanger here. I have the mix set to 100. And that's what creates that nice swirl and movement here. And then return track D, uh, E, I'm sorry, is the Valhalla room verb. That's creating more space as well. So let me just pop that in with the uh, with the bass and the drums. Okay, and then we also have another lead part here. This is another electric uh, lead. And I'm changing the, I think I, I kept the same amp, or there's actually another amp, 65 Deluxe. It's just giving a little bit of tone difference. Um, using some some fuzz here, the mud honey, a little bit of delay. I'm just slightly changing the tone. And this has a little bit, it's all about the performance. It's actually what this line is playing.
So when I put them together. I couldn't tell exactly the parts that were being played in the original. I'm going for the feel here. So I might not play the exact same parts. Uh, so those of you who are pros, much better guitar players than I am, just give me some grace here. Um, but I'm just like, man, yeah, this is what it feels like. I want to add another layer because I'm hearing something higher up and it just fills this up really nicely. Um, so that thought process led me to create two other lines here because I want to walk you through how I'm thinking through this. I think that's more important than just showing you what I did is now I've got two guitar tracks where I'm, I'm doubling here as almost like to highlight certain parts of the riff. So think about reading a sentence, you get your highlighter marker, and you just want that one phrase to stick out a little more. You could do that with doubling, not just with guitars, but with your vocals. Use it as a highlighter. So you have this part here. So again, they're all different tones. Um, I, I, you know, I don't even know what this metal clean thing, right? It, it sounds cool. It had much more crunch, and the preset or patch isn't the main event here to focus on. It's the actual principle, like getting a lick here that will just accent this moment of the actual riff. That's probably more important. And then they're not panned completely hard left and right. They're there just to kind of fill uh, the gaps a little more. And then the similar thing is taking place at the very end here with that nice little solo. Again, probably played it wrong, but trying to capture the overall feel. Now this came off as not so gritty and not so crunchy. So this is gonna be a lot more of a cleaner tone so I'm not using a lot of, um, you know, none of the pedals are on here. And again, 65 Deluxe Reverb, making sure it's just really clean. A little bit of crunch here. Adding some vibrato or tremolo, right? Um, and wetting it with some chorus. Yeah. So let's go ahead and put all the guitars together now with the bass and drums. I'm gonna add another layer because the electric guitars are doing, you know, they're the driving force of this, but there's a layer of shimmer going on too. Um, in my mind was going, well, maybe a shaker or something, but I was like, no, like an acoustic guitar sitting on top of that is a great way to just add that nice shimmer and life, right? So electric guitars, they've got a really cool swirly tone to it. But then when you layer it with an acoustic guitar, man, it just adds this nice elegance to the top end. So I've got this acoustic guitar instrument. Remember, I'm doing a hybrid approach here, right? Some live tracking, some VST instruments, um, because I think a lot of people can relate more to this than being able to track or even play any of the instruments efficiently. Hear me though, it doesn't mean that you're lacking skill by being able to do it via instruments, okay? Um, here is the acoustic instrument I'm using from Native Instruments. I'm using Strummed Acoustic 2, and this is all about finding the closest rhythm possible that complements the, the, the groove. So when I what I was really looking for, and I couldn't really find a pattern, was the So if I played it in the electric, logic means that, you know, it goes to say that I can play it on the acoustic as well, but I'm just showcasing it here and what you would be able to do in this circumstance. So I've got this is the closest rhythm here, and I can kind of somewhat manipulate the timing here by playing the chords in a unique placement. So maybe bring these chords a little bit earlier. And that changes the actual feel and the groove. If I had it a little further back, it, it's a little behind, right? So let's move this ahead a little bit. So 
So that helps out. And so now I'm adding a little bit of kickstart too, which is just a plugin that allows a little bit of ducking, uh, somewhat like side chaining. And that just adds this, a little bit of that motion going on. So feel free to just keep this on loop and create a meme off of this. But yeah, I've got a little bit of that going on, compressing it so I can control any of the ding, ding all those peaks and dynamics that are happening. And then just an EQ to just highlight some of that shimmer and, the, and glimmer that's going on there. And yeah, again, the EQs, don't look at them as the cheat code, look at them as, you know, how I'm able to balance each individual instrument with all the other instruments in the track as well, okay? So we've got that acoustic drum, uh, the acoustic strumming going, a little bit of the sense here that we talked about before. And this really helps just kind of elevate all the other instrumentation. So let me just put that in with the rest of the tracks. I'm gonna incorporate just a couple to what I would say are filler instruments that somewhat bridge the gap or kind of fill in some of the gaps there and create atmosphere and space. I don't know if these instruments are actually in the original, they might not, but again, I'm doing this for the sole purpose of, I want something kind of like fill in some of those gaps, and add a little bit more depth and space to it. So what came to my mind is having an organ. So I'm using the Aturia B3 organ here. just playing the same chord progressions as the guitar. And then I'm actually going to layer um, with some pads. And I'm using the OPX right here from Aturia as well. Reason being, I just wanted something bright, uh, some kind of string pads here. And they're really to be tucked in. And you'll notice that once I put them into the mix of everything, it really just helps kind of create that extra thing in there that just kind of seals the deal for me. Now, obviously the missing puzzle piece here is Sabrina's amazing performance sitting on top of the instrumentation here. But I hope what you're gleaming from this, I hope what you're taking from this video isn't necessarily, oh great, now I know exactly the patches and the preset, but you're understanding the principles, right? We talked about how layering some drum sounds on top of your acoustic drum kit can really just help you work smarter and not spend hours on tweaking one sound to get to where you wanna go. We talked about how creating the tone and using other doubles as, as a means to highlight certain parts of a riff or a phrase can really help that part stick out. So, um, and then using a lot of the effects such as multiple reverbs, multiple delays can create the right environment for your tracks to sit in so that you're creating all the depth and the space to work with. So if you're making tracks and it feels like, man, this just feels bland, it feels one dimensional, it most likely is that you're lacking a lot of the things that we covered in this video. So I hope this was helpful for you and encouraging. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're looking for mentorship, if you're looking for me and other leading professionals in this industry to just invest and pour into you and helping you directly meet the needs that you have with building confidence and excelling with your music, well, I wanna direct your attention over to beatacademy.com. As a matter of fact, I've got an immense amount of resources that are already there free. And plus I do a couple free workshops a month. So chime into those as well, because I, then I'm able to kind of meet you right where you're at. And then there's mentorship opportunities in that as well. So beatacademy.com and you can click the link below to go ahead and access that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.